Today I'm making a tutorial on how to make regular pine look like distressed barn wood. Um, I've done it on one half of my table. You can see over here, I've done one half of it. And now I'm doing it over on this half. And I'll just give you a quick few tips and tricks. On, uh, tips and tricks. I'm not gonna do too much of it, um, only because this video could get actually really long. But these are the tools that I've used to add some character to the table. This was just plain pine. Uh, when I got it, I had um, a friend make the table for me. Um, he's sanded down the edges so that when you glue them together, you don't get a crisp seam. I wanted a seam that was actually very visible, looked kind of worn down. Um, a couple of things I've used is just drill bit with a hammer. You just knock it in, it just gives you a couple of really good dents. Um, I've taken in many places the chain on the edge of the table and I just sanded it like this. Ooh, it's shaking my camera. And it just bumps this edge. It just gives it a really bumpy finish because you don't want it to look like new pine wood straight from the store. One of the things is using one of these large oversized screws and a hammer and then just finding a place and just doing some quick wormholes in random, very random sections. Not too many, but once you get stain on it, it looks very, very cool and actually looks like real barn wood. Um, uh, then this, you can use a chisel. I couldn't find my chisel anywhere, so I just got out this file that I have. It's a rect uh, triangular file. And this is great for just going along and just putting some good gouges right into your wood. And I just keep gouging until it's nice and deep. And then you have to go along and you have to sand all of these gouges out because you don't want them to be a sharp gouge. That won't feel very realistic. It's kind of got a sharp edge to it. You want them to be a little bit softer and you have to kind of go back through and get a lot of the, um, the little slivers that have left behind because you don't want to be painting over those and then wiping those off with a, with a, um, with a washcloth later. So it's a lot easier to just sand them down now. So before I paint, I just go through and I just sand out all of my really deep grout gouges. Then I'm going to go over some of the supplies that I use and um, I'll tell you all my tools and everything that I use. Um, I typically always wear gloves with projects like this just so my nails don't take a beating and because I don't want any of the stain on my hands. You don't want that to get into your skin. It's very toxic. Um, I do have the door open today for good ventilation um, because the VLC is pretty high on stain and I don't want to be breathing that in all day. And so, um, anyway, I'm just, I'm just sanding down some of those rough um, groove areas that I had. They shouldn't feel sharp at all, they should feel soft. This is a, probably the best idea to put deep, deep, deep grooves in a table if you are a mom or a dad of young children. Um, it might work on a grandparent's table because they don't have kids at it every single night. Well, not most grandparents anyway. Some do. Um, but um, you don't want crumbs in here because if you're cleaning up peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all day, every day, the last thing you want to do is have to get your washcloth and wash it off. And you don't want to have guests over and have crumbs jammed down in there. Or you don't want to have to get the vacuum out every single time you want to wipe down your table. That's kind of a pain. So I suggest banging up the table a little bit if you're trying to make a farmhouse table and you have little kids, but you don't have to go all out and make the grooves quite so deep if you have little kids, just because cleanup can be a nightmare. But farm tables are super awesome for little kids too, because if they take a fork to it or a knife to it with their Play-Doh or whatever, they're just gonna add some character to it. So anyway, I'm just buffing out some of these, these harder, um, deeper groove spots. and making them a little bit softer. I'm almost done, I should have had this done before I started this video. I've been doing this all morning and I'm really starting to sweat. And I'm in Arizona and it's really warm outside. So I've got the door open, but it's not letting in a cool air at all today because Arizona likes to pretend that we don't have seasons. When in fact we do, so I'm going to get my vacuum out and I'm just going to zip that all up and get all my sawdust out. Okay. 
so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this stain and I'm using a foam brush to do it because the foam brush is gonna allow me to get stain down into the deep grooves. What I'm using today is Classic Gray Min Wax. It's an oil-based stain, very smelly. So always do it in a well and oily place. You wouldn't wanna do this inside an apartment in the middle of winter in New York, for instance. You're gonna want a good open door and window to help ventilate. Um, so anyway, this is Classic Gray. You could do this in any color. I'm choosing to go an ashy gray color um, only because that's the type of barn wood that I have in my house. I have some barn wood shelves that have that kind of a look and so I really want that look. So I went with that, but I'm making it a little more brown by putting in some squirts of this. This is a Express Color Wiping Stain and Finish. It's water-based. I'm using it in walnut. I wasn't able to find it at Home Depot. And so, and I don't know, I, don't, I didn't even bother to look at Lowe's, but um, I had to order this on Amazon. So if you wanna find this, you can find it on Amazon. You can find anything on Amazon, right? And then I'm just adding some brown to it. I'm adding two squirts to a good amount of stain down in a bowl. There is no ma magic formula. I actually don't care if this plank matches this plank because no two pieces of barnwood are alike because they're all exposed to different elements and different, if it's on a different side of the barn than the other side, it might've gotten more light, therefore it might be more faded. So I really don't care if there's too much um, continuity when it comes to doing barnwood. And then I'm just gonna be super liberal about putting this on. I'm gonna use my this rag. Okay. I'm gonna be super liberal about putting this on so it gets down into all of those deep grooves. it all off you can tell it looks quite gray we're gonna come back and do something a little extra <clears throat> in just a minute this tabletop is was made by a friend of mine and I had him just build me a little apron around the bottom of it if that makes sense kind of like a little skirt around it and it fits right over the top of my existing table um, because my existing table is actually a really pretty finish. It just wasn't the look I wanted. And I liked the base of my table and I didn't want to go paying for a brand new table because I really like my base. It matches my chairs. So I didn't really feel like going all out and being new. I just needed my tabletop to be different. And so instead of painting over my nice table, I just had him build me a little skirt that just literally, it just fits right over the top of my existing table. I'm just finishing one plank at a time here, getting it in those deep grooves. Always wear gloves and always go the grain of the wood. Never go against the grain. If the grain runs long ways, you're going to work long ways. It seems pretty simple, but you'd be amazed how many people are just so anxious to get it done that they start painting the other direction. It's like when you're coloring in a coloring book. Just remember what you learned in kindergarten. All right, so I've got one full plank painted in this grayish brown color. And it looks pretty good, but it doesn't have near the character we want it to have. And then I'm taking this other rag and I am going to put some brown on the end of it. And I just kind of get my finger up in here like this. And I'm then in just random places, I'm just gonna mark it up. Just random, and then I'm just gonna kind of rub it in. But I'm not putting it all over. And the reason for that is because barn wood is not even. There's nothing even or congruent about barn wood. Barn wood is very, very miscolored and misshapen and random. Just think random. You don't want anything to be, so if you, let me put it this way. If you are super anal, and you like things to be even and matched, this is not your project. You gotta be willing to put it all over and randomly, and it can't match. And maybe this whole side is gonna be dark and then I'm not gonna put any over here. You gotta be willing to have it not match. 
because that's going to help you achieve a barn look. All right, so that's about it. I'm not going to do probably much more than that. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it's a little more brown, actually a lot more brown than we had it before. It was very gray, and now I've just gone along and added some touches of brown. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but to the planks next to it, you're going to see it looks way more brown instead of this color. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to try and bring that color over to here. Just wipe this up a little bit more. Make sure it's dry enough. The good news is when you're working with oils, wood just kind of sucks up your color and so you can move on to the next process. Unlike acrylic, you have to wait for dry times. On this project, you don't really have to wait. You can just do one plank after another. Okay, then I'm using um, some Rust-Oleum chalk paint from Home Depot. Um, you could use any white paint for this, but I wouldn't use a semi-gloss or a gloss. You could probably use eggshell, matte, or satin. Um, but anything shinier than that is going to look shiny and that will totally ruin the look of a barn table. So I've dipped it in just a tiny little bit. You can, like I said, you can use any paint. This just happens to be the white that I had laying around and the white that I finished these chairs in. So it was just extra leftover paint. So I'm just barely dipping it in. Then with a paper towel, I'm wiping pretty much all of it off. This is called dry brushing. I'm wiping it all the way off till there's hardly anything left on it. Then with my hand, I'm just the weight of my hand. I am lightly going over it. Okay, I might have wiped off a little too much. That's the good news with dry brushing is you can always go back and get a little bit more. Um, I'm just kind of letting gravity do most of it. This is all in the elbows. This is just in the way you swing, but it's not, um, I'm not really pushing down. Plus there's not much paint. I don't have to press paint out. Whatever is just landing here is just landing here. And as I brush along, it's just giving it that ashy, um, more gray, weathered look. Weathered wood has so many layers and so many dimensions that that's what we're trying to mimic with this process. We're not, we don't want it to look like nice wood. We don't want it to look varnished and perfect. It's, it's going to be random. And this piece is going to look probably way more brown than the one next to it, and that's okay. Um, be willing to accept it. Um, so I am just continuing to give this a really good whitewash dry brush process, I guess you could call it. I don't know if you guys can see that with this video, um, but it's just given it some age and makes it look a little bit more like its sisters next to it. So you can see we're achieving that barn look, but we're not having to spend thousands of dollars on a restoration hardware table. And we didn't have to pay for actual barn wood because let's face it, nowadays people have gotten wind of that and they're, they're selling barn wood for a real price and they're making a lot of money on it. But you can do it yourself with tools and pine boards from Home Depot. And it's a really great solution and I think it's gonna look fantastic. And then I'm gonna post this on my Instagram when I get my Thanksgiving table all done up and I'll showcase it there. So you can find me at RestoreAZ on Instagram and hope to see you there sometime. Take care. <laughs>